NBC's Vaughn Hilliard in Iowa, NBC senior legal correspondent Laura Jarrett, and Mary McCord, former acting assistant attorney general for national security at the Department of Justice. So, Laura, you just broke that story earlier today. You were breaking news that the Mike Pence documents case is closed because apparently he handled the documents completely differently than former President Trump from everything we know. Well, that is certainly true. It stands in stark contrast, those two situations. The department, Andrea, I should mention, is not commenting on why exactly the investigation has ended. But I have confirmed that DOJ, its National Security Division, actually sent uh, the former vice president's lawyer a letter, a brief letter, just yesterday, informing them that the investigation had been completed and that it would be ended without any charges being sought. Obviously, the political and legal ramifications of this are noteworthy for Pence who is expected to announce his uh, candidacy for president officially, even though we had known that he was going to. He's officially supposed to announce next week. And so to be able to have this cloud that had been hanging over him for months um, is, is obviously something that uh, his camp is telling me they are pleased by, Andrea. And so, Vaughn, last night in Iowa, we heard the usual pushback when uh, Mr. Trump was discussing legal problems, including Jack Smith's classified documents investigation. It was a town hall with Sean Hannity uh, and no follow-up questions on this whole point. Right. He said that he did not know uh, about this particular document, that the recording suggests that he, in fact, was alluding to and potentially had in his possession. This Iran-related document, I mean, is at the heart of this investigation here. You're talking about uh, the former president acknowledging that he had classified material and one that potentially had uh, broad implications, national security implications, if, in fact, any other eyes uh, were laid on it. And I think it's important to note, it was the town hall uh, earlier this month in which he was asked, did anybody see any of these classified documents? And he said, quote, not really. And what this recording now suggests is that this is a much deeper conversation than uh, the former president is uh, uh, allowing the American public to be privy to. Yesterday, Sean Hannity did not ask a single follow-up question of Donald Trump when he denied uh, doing anything wrong in this particular case. Of course, at the heart of the question here, which Laura is getting to, is that you know, Mike Pence, for all intents and purposes, worked with the Department of Justice to uh, 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 open up uh, his uh, home and uh, turn over all relevant documents. The issue here with the Department of Justice and Donald Trump is that two month period of time in which a lawyer for Donald Trump signed off that all the relevant documents had been turned over to the government. Two months later, that search warrant was executed. They found more than 100 classified documents in the question that we as the American public do not have the answer to at this point, And perhaps the special counsel has is what exactly was in those 100 classified documents? Who may have seen those documents outside of Donald Trump? And was there obstruction of justice? Was there intentional negligence or uh, obfuscation or the movement of documents so as to retain them and not turn them over to the government, as his lawyer had suggested he had done in June? And, Laura, there's also new reporting in The Washington Post that the Georgia probe into alleged election interference by former President Trump has broadened now to include activities in Washington, D.C., and several other states, and that this could all be folded into some kind of a state racketeering uh, legal case. Yeah. Can you, can you explain? <laughs> Yes, and it's important to note that that is separate from everything we've been talking right. about as it relates to classified documents. And some of these probes are overlapping, which I think makes it interesting for prosecutors, but perhaps hard for the American public to follow, because obviously Jack Smith, the special counsel in Washington, D.C., is also interested in the former president's efforts to cling to power. But at the same time, you have a state prosecutor down in Georgia um, who's been looking for some time into his efforts in Georgia to block the certification of the election and different efforts that he undertook. And one of the things that this Washington Post report raises is the idea that he actually commissioned um, two outside firms to look at voter fraud. Those firms turned up nothing. And then they tried to bury that evidence. And now it turns out that Georgia investigators are interested in, in that and uh, could be widening it to beyond Georgia into Washington, D.C. and to other states. It's notable that the Georgia RICO statute that uh, the DA is sort of uh, an expert in, if you will, she's mentioned it before as something she has charged defendants for, it allows a much broader scope of um, 
certain acts to come in than the federal statute. And so she might have potentially an even broader reach than, say, Jack Smith would under the federal statute. We'll have to obviously wait and see what Fannie Willis comes up with. But it's an interesting side note to, the, to note that, obviously, she's looking into it, and it could be grounds for the former president to challenge it if he thinks that this is beyond her scope, beyond what she's allowed to do legally. And Mary McCord, let's talk about the, ta the time frame here, because you've got uh, the Fonnie Lewis, the DA in Georgia, already twice pushing back, which she said were initially going to be imminent indictments, perhaps in deference to federal probes going first. But you've got the understandable, you know, Justice Department president, at least, their president, not a law, not to pursue these cases in the middle of a campaign. How does it get, when does it get too close to a campaign? The campaign's already heating up and he is a candidate. Right. You know, like you said, there's guidance, there's policy within the Department of Justice not to take any kind of uh, actions in an investigation that would cause someone to question whether they might be being taken in order to influence a campaign or influence an election. Because our presidential election starts so early in this country, that really, you know, gives a very big window uh, that the Department of Justice tries to avoid if possible. But I'd say in this matter, I mean, I, I don't think it's realistic to think that that DOJ uh, would avoid from here on out through the 2024 election taking any kind of um, legal action against Trump or those in his inner circle because of that policy. That policy is sort of roughly a 60-day policy, but even still here, I think it's quite likely that we'll see action on the Mar-a-Lago investigation in the coming days or weeks. Um, the January 6th investigation by Jack Smith is at a little bit slower pace, but I think it's possible we'll see action by the end of the summer. And it looks like Fonnie Willis may be making a decision in August or at least by early September. Now, the problem then is you're going to potentially having a lot of cases trying to get through um, trial before the election. And so that's where I think it could get complicated. But I think this summer is, is sort of a safe area for the Department of Justice to act. And I think most of the judges in D.C., if there are indictments brought, one or more um, in D.C. on federal cases, I think the judges will try to move those along quickly.